My name is Joshua Roy and in 2015 I started Access World Seminars and it was something that I did for a, a way of keeping myself empowered. Have you got things in your life that you do to keep yourself empowered? Keep yourself moving forward, keep yourself active, actively developing yourself. I found that I didn't have a lot going for me and I was like, it was too easy to be slack. It was too easy to fall off the bandwagon. It was too easy to fall over and, and do nothing. In fact, I love playing computer games. Any computer gamers here? <laughs> that was something that I did. I'd sit down and lose myself for hours in a computer game. And uh, this was something that changed all that. It gave me focus, it gave me direction, and it became about helping others. Because there's two lots of people in this world. There are consumers and there are creators. And I was pretty much a consumer, I believe. Whereas I decided to change and become a creator. Become somebody who was giving. Become someone who was able to you know, create something that was worthwhile. That would not only benefit myself, but benefit by and large other people. So that's where this happened. It, it actually happened for me at a seminar. Which is why I believe in seminars. Because I've been through many seminars and I've had life-changing experiences each time. It started when I was 15 years old, or 14. I went to my first seminar. My father paid for it. We went along to a seminar called The Mind and You. It was ran by, man, ran by a man called Peter McMahon. And Peter McMahon was an ex-school teacher, and now he was teaching about the power of the mind. And I loved what I learned in that seminar. I learned two major concepts. The first one was the power of affirmations. Who's used affirmations in their lives? Anyone used them? Everyone knows what affirmations are. Affirmations are simply thing, words or sentences we say that keep us thinking in a positive way. They could be healing sentences. They could be something that most makes us feel good, makes us feel happy, helps us to move in a good direction. So affirmations. I had a stutter at age 14. And whenever there was a pretty little girl around me, whenever I was in a situation where I felt nervous, I'd begin to stutter you probably can't notice today. The reason you can't notice is I've overcome that stutter. This created for me this idea of if there's a weakness or a problem or a challenge in your life, there are two things that you can do. You can either sit in there and wallow in it, you can look for someone else to blame, or you can take responsibility and say, you know what, I want to change this. And you can dust yourself off, get yourself up, and overcome the challenge. And that's the way I decided to start doing things. When I was 14, I decided that I wanted to take charge of this stutter. And so I spoke the affirmation over and over in my mind, I speak clearly and well. I speak clearly and well. And I repeated that constantly, consistently, over and over in my mind. Every time I'd stutter, I'd repeat those words. What I found was over time, the unconscious mind began to hear, began to listen. And once the unconscious mind began to listen, life for me changed. And I no longer started today. It probably took me about two years to deal with that one. As I was there in that seminar also, I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to be, you know, I thought to myself, what could I become in the future if I really believed it? At the time I was training in karate and I was quite good at it. I was very good at it. And I trained consistently four or five days a week. So two hours a day, five days a week and I decided to put this mind power stuff to the test. So I began to visualize myself winning tournaments, doing really well in my chosen sport. At age 16 I became the Australian Karate Champion. So those two things, dealing with a stutter and becoming an Australian Karate Champion, I started to look at my life differently and started to think, is it possible that if we believe that we can accomplish something and we take the action or put in the work, that we can be, do or have anything in life. And I started to believe that more was possible for me. Now I went on through my life and I got married. At age 20, 21, I got married. And I was married for only six years and I got divorced. Didn't work out. And I went back to the drawing board. I thought, this is terrible. Who's been through a marriage separation, divorce? something difficult, a tough time, it hurts. And what we discover is emotional pain is worse than physical pain. Who agrees with me? 
emotional pain worse than physical pain? Now, I'm probably saying that because I've never had chronic physical pain. Perhaps somebody who's had chronic physical pain might disagree with me, but I don't know. I believe emotional pain is worse, and I've had, I've had both to a certain extent. <coughs> I went back to the drawing board and decided that I needed to re-educate myself around relationships. And so Access World Seminars has given me this avenue, this ability to learn and grow, and not only learn and grow for myself, but also disseminate information, pass it on to others. And what I find is the teacher always learns more than the student. So if you want to test your knowledge, if you learn something over the next day or two or three, and you really want to learn and expand your learning, go and teach somebody. Pick up one of the ideas out of the, the principles we share and go and share it with somebody else. What you'll find is it goes deeper into your mind and deeper into your heart and it will become part of your life. So that's the idea, is not just soak it in for yourself, but give it to others. So here we are at the seminar, and this seminar is for you. It really is, it's for you. Certainly I'm going to benefit from it. I get to go over all this good information again. I get to reinforce these things in my mind, but ideally, this is for you. And you've got to decide, what am I going to do with this information? Am I going to just let it sit there and resonate with me? Or am I going to take it from my head and put it into my heart? Or am I going to go one step further? Am I going to take it from my head, put it into my heart, and put it into my hands? There's really three steps of learning. There's cognitive, that's your brain. Many of you know things. You have understanding of it, but do you actually know it? You see, you might know it on an intellectual level. And it's good to know stuff intellectually. We're all fairly smart, we've been around for a while. We know stuff on an intellectual level. But that's only the first level of knowledge. That's only the first level of, of real understanding, like deep understanding. There's two more levels. What I said is we go from the head then to the heart. Okay, this is where we put emotion with it. This is where we take this idea and we start to do it. We start to believe it's true. We put emotion with it and then finally it goes to our hands and this is the action, the action step. Now when you know something, or well, you might think you know it, and you don't do it consistently. Or maybe you don't do it at all. Maybe you just know it, it's just there in the back of your mind. You could use it at any time, it's just sitting in the back of your mind. When it goes to your heart and then to your hands, it becomes part of your life. It becomes part of who you are. And so that's the idea of what today, tomorrow and, the, and Saturday is all about, is taking the information you have, which you already have. You're probably smarter people in this room than I am, no doubt. Okay, you've got the information in your mind. How do we get it from the mind to the heart and how do we get it from the heart to the hands? So that all three parts of us are connected. That's what knowledge is. Knowledge is not just knowing about something, it's doing it. And it's doing it consistently. And so that's the level of learning that I want to see you guys get. So as we go through this seminar, I would ask you to play 100%. You could sit there and be passive in your learning and just take it in cognitively. Take it in intellectually. You could intellectualize to the end of your days. It's not going to necessarily make a difference or a change in your results intellectualizing it will not. We've got to get it from the head to the heart and then from the heart to the hands. We've got to make it part of our very makeup, every fiber of our being to use one of those, uh, you know, those type of sentences. So the outcomes of the training, here's what we want to look at doing. I've got a picture there from the Love, Dating and Relationship Seminar that will be held at the end of this year. So there'll be a second seminar this year, full day seminar. There's actually five all up. I've got three half day seminars coming up. One is a memory course. One is a health course to do with health and wellness and well-being. These are all about reprogramming or repatterning our brain so that we get new results. It's about doing what I call a rip work reload. I'm a police officer. Those of you who don't know, I think you all do. I'm a police officer, and one thing that we do in the firing range is we hold our firearm, we have to shoot at targets. Now what happens is, as we're shooting at the targets, eventually we run out of ammunition, right? You can't just shoot forever, not like the movies. I love it how you've got these, you've got these six shooters and they, they shoot, and you count them and you say, wasn't that like 35 shots? 
You know, they just keep shooting and they just endless supply. It's not like that in real life. So in real life we run out of, out of bullets. And when you run out of bullets, one or two things has happened. Well, either you've run out of bullets, like the first thing, or you've got a round stuck in the chamber. And if it's stuck in the chamber, it might be sitting there obstructing other rounds from coming up. So you may have three or four or five more rounds left, but you've got one stuck. It's jammed. And so there's something that we do to help that along. And so what we do is we do what's called a tap rack. So you tap the bottom of the gun and then you rack it. And what happens is that ejects the crushed round or the round that didn't work. It ejects it. And then you're able to fire the action again. Now, if you fire again a second time and it stops again, you know that you've reached the end. You've reached, there's no more bullets or you've got a second one jammed, you're better off getting rid of it, putting a new cartridge in. So what we do is we pull the magazine out, we then do a rip work reload. So we rip the magazine, we work the gun three times, one, two, three, then we get a fresh magazine and we pop it in. And away we go, we're ready to go again. Now in life, sometimes our brain's a bit like this. Sometimes our brain needs a jolt. Sometimes we get stuck and we just need a little tap. Is that true? So we come along to a workshop. We go along to something or we read a book or we get a little bit of an idea of something. And we find a solution. Maybe we go to bed and we ask a question. Because your unconscious mind, the way it works is it will come up with answers. All you've got to do is ask questions. Ask your mind questions, your mind will find an answer. If I asked you like the most ridiculous questions like, why is the moon made of green cheese? Notice what your brain's doing. It's trying to find an answer. You're trying to answer that question. Oh, wait a minute, it's not. What's he saying? This is crazy. I've never heard such a... Whatever your brain's doing, when you ever, whatever question you feed it, it begins to try to get an answer. That's what your brain does. That's what the brain is designed for, is to give us answers. Now, there's some times in life where we get stuck. We don't know what to do. Who's been there? Who's been there more than once? Okay, if you've been there many times, you're like myself. Sometimes we need something more than a bit of a tap. And so what we need is we need a rip, a work, and a reload, like a reboot. When your computer gets full of files, sometimes what we can do is shut down the program and then open up the program and it works better. But sometimes our computer's running like a snail. Who's had that happen before? I don't know whether it's malware, whether it's, it's uh, viruses that are on there, whatever attached itself to this computer, it's just dragging along. Perhaps we don't have enough RAM, our RAM's all full because the computer's been on for you know, three weeks, we haven't turned it off, and it's just used up all the RAM. There's been so many things open, haven't been shut down. Eventually we need a reboot. We need to turn the whole system off and reboot it. And eventually, like occasionally, we also need a reformat where we just start completely get to a complete wipe. I think of seminars this way. I think of seminars as being a rip, work, and a reload for your brain. And that's what happened, that's my experience. I've got this stutter, so what do, I, what do I do to overcome this stutter? I can just try harder, but if I try harder with the tools that I had, I wasn't getting any results. I needed to discover tools that were going to work. And so the seminar gave me those tools, but not only the tools, that's only part of it. Tools are only part of it. The other thing you need is the belief, the belief that the tool will work. So when you've got the tool and you've got the belief working together in harmony, that's when we get the result. If you don't believe it's going to work, it's probably not. If you think that you're beaten, you are. If you think that you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you don't think you can, it's almost a cinch you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the bigger or stronger man, but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks he can. That's how we get winning. So let's look at this. Welcome to Access World Seminars. Your commitment to yourself should be to discover who you really are, unlock your incredible self and unleash that on the world. The outcomes of the training are one, to destroy limited beliefs. So we're looking at not only increasing or improving your toolkit, so you've got more tools that you can use, but we want to get you in a place where you believe that these tools will work. We want to be able to destroy some of those limiting beliefs that you have. Now, some people have had a bad experience with seminars. I remember one friend at work, he came to me, he says, oh, I don't go to seminars. He says, I went to a property development seminar, and about a year later, the guy who taught the seminar was in jail <laughs> for fraud, for property fraud or some other thing. And so he said, oh, I just don't believe in them. You know, he was doing that to get wealthy off other people. 
you know, doing that to make money off other people. They don't actually do anything in their own life. And that's his belief. That's not my belief. I have a different belief or association around seminars. And to be fair though, sometimes I see people out there getting excited about their seminar, their teaching, and they've got dollar signs in their eyes. Are they really there to help people or are they there to get rich? And so some people are disingenuous. Other people are very genuine. And so we've got to be, be careful. Overcome irrational fears. Who's got some irrational fears in their life? The idea of that word fear, false evidence appearing real. There's a little acronym that you can think of when you think of fear. False evidence appearing real. And that's really what fear is. A lot of times fears aren't real. Now we've got the coronavirus. We've got some different things happening in the world today, which are real fears. I mean, nobody wants to get this virus. That's a scary thing. There are also other fears that are completely irrational. Okay, we've got to think about, well, what is rational, what is irrational? And let's measure that. Let's work that out. Like the fear of public speaking. Is that a rational fear? I'm worried. I'm scared that people would judge me. People are judging you anyway. <laughs> you might as well just get out in front. So oftentimes it's about dancing with your fears. And the way that we deal with this over, or overcome irrational fears is we dance with them. We realise you're going to be scared. I went and did many kickboxing fights. I did karate, then I moved to kickboxing. And I don't think there was one time that I didn't get my gloves on. And then after I got my gloves on, it's about five or ten minutes till I've got to go out and fight. Suddenly I need to pee. Right? Who's, who's ever had an experience like that? And I've got the gloves on, so I can't do anything. I'm not going to ask somebody else to help me. <laughs> so somebody's got to undo my glove. And mind you, they've, they've wrapped it up. Then they put the glove on, then they put tape around it, so that it, it's really firm and it's quite difficult to get off. Sometimes you've got to cut it with scissors, but it's got to be done. I've got to go do that nervous pee before I get out there. But you know what? I thought, well, maybe after my fifth fight, I won't get nervous anymore. Guess what? I get nervous every time. And I've heard of boxers that say they get afraid and nervous every time. Doesn't matter how many fights they have, they might have had a thousand fights. Every time they go out there, they're afraid. They don't look afraid because they've learned to dance with their fear. They learned to take their fear and say, you know what, it's going to be there anyway. I'm just going to go with it. And that's the idea of, of overcoming irrational fears is let's look at what's rational, what's irrational. And let's overcome the irrational part of it. Okay, replace laziness with unstoppable motivation. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> Who's lazy? If you're human, you're lazy. It's one of the natural predispositions that we have. I mean, it's good to be lazy sometimes, isn't it? And you know what? It's times and seasons. There are seasons when you can take it easy a little bit, where you can rest and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But don't rest too long. Don't rest too long. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they get comfortable. And when there's comfortable, too much comfortability, there's no growth. You've got to remain a little bit uncomfortable. We need, we need discomfort. And one of the sayings I like is find comfort in discomfort. I really like that. Because what we want to do is make being, dis, being uncomfortable the new norm for our life. Being uncomfortable is okay. We're okay to be uncomfortable. Make a measurable change to one area of your life. So think about that for this seminar series. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. So today, we'll talk about unlocking our emotions. That's of day one. Day two, we look at unlocking the area of communication. So that we can communicate more effectively with each other, with ourselves. We need to get communication happening between the three brains that we have. We'll talk more about that later. But we need to have good communication with ourselves. Be honest with ourselves. Who lies to themselves? You will do. <laughs> you all do. You've got a rational thinking lying brain, and guess what it does? It lies to you. When people come and see me about a problem or a challenge, they come and tell me I've got this problem. That's not the problem. That's the presenting problem. The challenge is beneath that. Somebody's told me I've got, you know, I'm lacking confidence. That's not the problem. That's what he's telling me. He needs more confidence. But the real challenge or the real problem is a feeling of inadequacy that's tied to something that happened years earlier. He's got this deep-seated feeling of inadequacy. And so he's running around trying to be confident. So you know what he did? He started teaching youth confidence, like that was going to solve the problem. And I said, how's that going for you? 
I said, how can you teach youth confidence when you don't feel confident? Are you confident in your ability to teach them confidence? And he wasn't. And I'm like, what's the point? So we've got to get down to the real issue. We've got to actually deal with, and this is where we start digging. And today we're going to do a lot of digging. We're going to do a lot of digging to get down right down deep. Okay, into the unconscious mind. We want to find out the truth. We don't want all this airy-fairy stuff. Because I'll ask you questions and you'll tell me the stuff that's here. The stuff that's conscious, not the real stuff. And the only way we can get to the real stuff is if you're willing. If you're willing to take a real hard look at yourself. My wife says it best. She says, look at your ugly. This is my wife, by the way, Rebecca. I love my wife. She says, look at your ugly. We've got to look at the ugly parts of us. When you go dating for the first time, what do you show? You show all the best parts of you, don't you? When you turn up for a job interview, what do you show? All the best parts. So we're used to this. We're used to going and showing the best part of ourselves. And what do we do to ourselves? Oh, let's just talk about the best parts of me. Rather than looking at our ugly. And sometimes we need to look at that. And we need to dig down deep and say, why is this happening? And we need to look at it that ugly. And that's scary. It's a scary place. It's not usual for a lot of people to do that. But that's what we're going to do. That's what we'll attempt to do during this seminar, is go down deep into our ugly recesses of our brain. <laughs> Find the truth. Because that's what we want. We can only work with truth and we can only change with truth. We can't change if we're lying to ourselves. We say it's not that bad. Everything's fine. It's not. We've got to go down. If there's weeds in the garden, you know, just ignore the weeds. You know, cover them up with a mat. You, you go and you rip them out. Okay, cover them up with more soil. What are they going to do? They're just going to grow through. That's what we do. Throw more soil on. Let's just cover it up with soil so it looks good. And who's done their weeding and you go out and you grab the weed and you rip it and it just snaps. You didn't get the roots. You get frustrated at that. You go, oh, because you know... You know that in two weeks' time you're back out there pulling that same thing up and you're hoping you get the root next time. So the idea is you try and get that finger down and you know, get that nice solid part so you can get the roots out. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to dig down deep and we've got to get the roots out, the roots of the problems. Uh, day three, we'll be talking about four areas of our life. So these four areas are, one is health. We'll be talking about relationships. We'll be talking about finances. And finally, we'll be talking about gratitude and the healing power of gratitude. Okay, so that, that, that's day four. We'll go over those things. Now, all through the three days, we'll be doing processes. Now, what are the processes for? The processes are for your unconscious mind. You see, we're doing a lot of this talk, and I'll be talking to your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. During the processes, though, primarily we're working with the unconscious mind. We want to create change below the surface of conscious thought. Now, what we've got to do, though, is loosen up your grip on reality. Because you have this grip on reality that you see the world and the way you see it is true. It's real, it's right. And I'm here to say that you've been deceived. Not about all of it. Not about all of it. Hang on to those truths that you have, but sometimes we make up stuff. Or we believe something that somebody else told us. And we need to shake that foundation. The only way to get change is to shake that a little bit. And so it's going to be okay. You can go back and believe everything that you once believed when you finished the seminar. Not that you will. But we're here to create a bit of change. We're here to let you know that your mind is so powerful that it can overcome any problem, any challenge, any difficulty, anything you face. If we can just tap into that ultimate power. And there is, there is a divine power within and that's what we're going to talk about over the next few days, is how we can tap into that divine power. And so if you're, if you're with me and you're keen to do that, we're going to have a ma magnificent experience. It's going to be wonderful. And I also know what's coming. And I just can't wait to see the change. Because I'll see it. I'll see it in your face. I'll see it in your body. I'll see it in your countenance. I'll see it in every part of you. And you will feel it. You will know it. That's why when people come to the seminar and leave, often they'll find their behaviour changing without even realising why. They may not understand it. Things are different though. Their behaviour is changing to some degree. And that's exciting for me because it works. So we make a measurable change to one area of your life. You can focus on one area in specific or you can just be general across all areas. But I would recommend pick one area and really hone in on it. 
So let's say it's communication or relationships, really hone in and make everything about that. If we're talking about finances and your goal area is relationships, work out how you can have better relationships with people that you work or do business with. That's how it works. Okay, So everything can really come down to one area. So think about an area of life that you really want to propel forward. I know that, and I've read some of the forms, people wanted everything. I want it all. I want everything. See, my suggestion is to bring it back and just really focus in on one area. Focus like a laser. Uh, the word laser, light amplification by stimulated emissions of radiation. What the laser beam does, it brings a large amount of light and it brings it to like a needle point. And it becomes so powerful that it can go through solid steel. So that's what we want to do, is, is really focus in on something. And as we focus in on one area of life, we'll get a measurable change. Give you the tools for self, to self-generate energy and build momentum. So we're going to do that as well. There'll be some times during the seminar where we'll stand up, we'll move. Welcome. So we'll move our body and we'll generate energy within ourselves. Because let's face it, if you're in a, rel a relationship and you've got high energy, you're excited to be there, you love each other, you're passionate. Compare that with a relationship that's got low energy. Is there any comparison? Who's been in both? <laughs> and who knows the contrast? And that's what it is, it's about contrast. We've got high energy or low energy. Who's had high energy in a job, in a career, in something they're doing? Or a new project they've taken on? And who's got low energy? Because it's mundane, it's monotonous, you're over it, you're ready to move on. It's the same thing. Okay, so we want to be able to generate, self-generate energy. And that's what we're going to practice over the next day or so.